My name is Herzl Koshetsky, and uh, I'm a native of St. John. Growing up in St. John, I think, um, had an influence on me just to the city itself. I find it a very visually interesting city. But also the fact that my father was an antique dealer. I was always uh, surrounded at home and at the store by the aesthetics of antiques and uh, craftsmanship. Uh, you know, I sort of learned a, a respect for the past and, and for good craftsmanship. Other than that, actually, my, my oldest brother was an artist and that directly had an influence on me. I was very moved by his work. I could see what a work of art uh, could do, you know, um, in, in emotionally moving someone. And uh, I thought, wow, that's what I want to do. I've always kind of uh, enjoyed using different mediums. You know, I, I do pencil, I do pen and ink, I do watercolors, I do oils, I do acrylic. I've painted everything. I mean, you know, I've done the human figure, I've done portraits, I've done still lifes, I've done nature, I've done landscapes. You know, and everything from a stone to a bug, to a brick, to a building, to a person, to a city. You know, it just takes in everything. That's just my interest. I find it difficult to to verbalize, to categorize my work because I, I I have such a variety of interests. I have such a variety of subjects uh, and of mediums that I use that it's difficult to kind of describe the work in in one manner or another. So I always refer to it as as figurative or representational, and figurative in the sense that it represents something from reality. I, I kind of leave that to the, to the art critics, to the writers who write about art and who categorize work. I mean, I, I'm more interested in producing it as opposed to labeling it. I think that over time the work develops. I would hope that over time the work develops and evolves, um, matures, and uh, both in technical uh, expertise as, as well as expression. So th this is a uh, part of my Renaissance series of paintings, and I was doing this to increase my technical skills of painting and drawing. And this is a detail from Michelangelo's Last Judgment. And this character is being uh, taken down uh, by these demons uh, to damnation. The biggest turning point for me was my trip to Italy um, in, in learning the skill of drawing from the Renaissance masters but it also developed my skill in the perception of content uh, in art. And, and that I didn't realize at first, but that became a very important part of my work because my early work was more abstract. And here I am, you know, studying all these Renaissance paintings, which 99% are religious and they're not of my particular religion. And yet they're, they're, they're very moving. I'm very inspired by them. It, it kind of art goes beyond a particular religion, you know, good, good art. This is one of my uh, early paintings when I was becoming very realistic and I um, wanted to make a comment that um, I wanted to do a painting that was very realistic but had no content. So I said, okay, I'm going to do an empty canvas with some flies on it. And the whole point is that, you know, um, just because a painting is realistic doesn't mean it has content. And in some art, the form is basically the content. In the other, the subject is more the content. So there's that kind of uh, dilemma. I kind of feel strongly about content in art, about not just the form. How you express it is, the technical aspect of it is part of it and is an important part of it, but it has to have something further. So imagine three panes of glass on the side sandwiched together. And the first layer is the technical. It's how you learn about composition, design, uh, line, color, shape, all the technical things that you learn to make an image. And then there, behind that layer is the creative layer. It's the layer that uh, originality, your imagination, the creative aspect of how you put all those things together. So you've got the technical, then you've got the creative, originality, imagination, and then you get the third layer, which is the content, the subject, 
the intellectual and emotional content behind what it is you're trying to express through that creativity and through that technical. And you can't really separate those. They're all together. They all come together to create the work of art. You know, if you're doing something like a still life, I think it, you, you take it back to why you're doing a still life in the first place. Are you doing something because you want to set up a still life and do it? Or do you see something that creates a response in you that you react to and the still life kind of already exists? And maybe you rearrange it a bit. Um, I think composition is a very important element in any artwork. It's just one of the technical aspects of, of a work of art. So sometimes it just comes intuitively and other times you have to, you know, work at it and, and to rearrange it and set it up more. So it, it varies, but it depends, I guess, on why you're doing the subject in the first place, what it is about the subject that drew you to that in the first place. The art of drawing is a language, the art of painting. So you're, you're, you have to learn the language and as you use that language to express yourself, Part of that is, is uh, when you're drawing or painting or observing is the selection of what you select or don't select. Sometimes in a painting, what's, what's as important is what you leave out. This drawing here is a, a pen and ink drawing, which um, is part of a series of the the Screaming Heads, which relates to the um, keeping separate one's emotions from going into your paintings. It's an emotion I want to get out, so it goes into a sketchbook or it goes on a page like this, as opposed to in my painting. I feel you, you kind of have to keep your moods out of the painting. Your deeper feelings may be in there, they come in unconsciously. But you don't consciously say, well, I'm going to you know, express this feeling or that feeling. I mean, it just happens because you are expressive. But, uh, you, you, you know, if you're in a bad mood and you just were upset over something, you can't put that in your portrait, right? But a work of art can communicate in two different ways. It communicates your thoughts as much as your feelings. So, you know, some artists are more intellectual, uh, thoughtful in their approach and what they want to express, and others are more emotional in what they want to express. So. Um, I guess you have to balance that. Inspiration is something that I feel is not something that comes from some far out place. Inspiration comes from within. It comes from the more you have worked, the more apt you're liable to get inspiration. Uh, the more you've observed and studied and painted and increased your vocabulary, the bigger your reservoir of vocabulary in the back of your head, then the more you've got that will come out unconsciously as inspiration into your work. So I thought of the analogy of, of a plant. A, a plant is genetically engineered to, to grow and it keeps growing. You know, there's a new leaf and then there's another new leaf and it just keeps growing until it either dies or, you know, something happens to it. And, and that's how I feel as an artist. You know, you, you produce artwork and you just keep painting and there's a, every painting is like a new leaf and you just keep growing until you're no longer painting. I've just come down from my studio I've been painting but I'm painting slow All the critics say hello Where's your latest paintings? I paint for fun and I paint for real Paint what I see and I paint what I feel All the critics say there's no appeal To my paintings I let the red fly high, let the blue fly low Onto the canvas the colors flow All the critics say, oh no, do you call that painting? One day I'll paint a masterpiece It'll be famous after I'm deceased I'll be the one who'll get the least from that painting 
I paint refined and I paint crude I'll paint you dressed or in the nude But I'll only paint when I'm in the mood For painting I paint when I'm mad and I paint when I'm sane I'll paint the stars, I'll paint the rain I love to paint and I'll never refrain From painting 